Pope Francis has called on all Catholics to live out this year of mercy, this Jubilee year of mercy. And I'm here with Sheila from Emmaus Ministry and Kirk, and their story really demonstrates God's love and his mercy at work. Sheila, where did you meet Kirk? I met Kirk um, about seven years ago down at the Catholic Charities Men's Shelter. It was uh, probably our first uh, time down there bringing a hot meal. And uh, for some reason, Kirk stood out. Uh, as you'll see, he's a very engaging sort of person, but his presence was just so evident to me. And uh, I knew immediately that there was something special about him. I didn't know what or, or how it was going to um, reveal itself, but I could tell that he was somebody who was in a lot of pain and uh, very defensive and almost kind of off-putting, yet we just constantly seemed to have crossed paths down there. And uh, as I got to know him, I, I learned about some of his, his uh, hurt and that uh, he had lost his parents when he was nine years old. They had both been killed in the car accident. Mm -hmm. And it led him to the streets and to addictions and crime and, and jail and stuff. Um, but happy to say now that he is uh, free of his addiction. He was an addict for 50 years. And now he is uh, going on his fifth year of being clean and sober. And um, some reason, um, the Holy Spirit put him in our in our vision and and wanted us to know who he was. And that's so beautiful. You know, Kirk, maybe you can describe a bit about you know what you felt happened with you when you felt kind of lost and and maybe angry with God. Well, it all happened when I was nine years old. Because I grew up in a church with the Methodists, and my parents was deceased. And it really didn't hit me until the day when they was putting them in the ground. And there was no more coming back. And right then and there, I didn't want to be involved with God anymore, because he took someone that loved us all when we were kids. And I lost that. And so I was very angry with God because all my little buddies, mother and father, were still alive. And it just hurt so bad that drugs was the best thing that could ease the pain. And that hurt. But then along my path of drugging and going back and forth to prison and did a long stretch. And then when I got out, I came here to Syracuse. And I was staying in the ox, still doing what I was doing, getting high, robbing. And I ran across Sheila. And this church started me on the right path. By her doing the things that she was doing. Because I used to always say to Sheila, yeah, if it wasn't for you and another fella, I would be dead and gone. But they always told me I did the work. And now I appreciate people. I love everybody. I don't have a hate bone in my body anymore, and I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. And I love Sheila like she's my real sister. And I also love you as my sister. <laughs> and it was never color. It was always the green, the dollar bill. But the church here showed me so much love through coming down there like that and it used to just light up the place. I wanted what they had, but I didn't think I was good enough. And that was it. I just fell behind Sheila and, and grew up. That's 
beautiful. And, and so through that, you really began to experience God's love. Again. Yes. yes, yes. Yes. That's wonderful. And now you do, you experience, have experienced it so much that you actually reach out to other people. Yes, I do. And show God's love to them too. How do you do some of that? Well, you know, I don't go boasting. I don't throw my chest out because I don't use anymore. I humble myself to these people. I go down to the mission, to the ops. I go to hospitals to see guys I used to use with. And I go around doing this because I was taught by a shield. And just through the grace of God. And I'm happy that I met Sheila and the people that work here. And I'm happy that I met you a couple of years ago <laughs> and we meet again. I just love people today. You can tell that. And, and how about some of your work with the seniors that you work with too? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I went there and I asked Sheila, I said, Sheila, these people, every day I would go in, I would be loud because some of them came here and I said, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> and they would look at me and say, oh, we're just waiting. Mm -hmm. And it used to cut me. I said, they're waiting just to die. And I talked to my dog upstairs because I got a little puppy. And I said, Zach, there's nothing I can do for these people. So I called Sheila and told Sheila, and Sheila talked to me, and we started having bingo at there. And they look for it all the time. They ask, are they still coming? Is the lady with the big truck coming? They don't know it's a van. And I told them, I said, uh, I'm thinking about moving. And it was me cutting them. And I changed my mind about moving. But they keep saying, yeah, you brought joy to the place. I said, I didn't bring it. I said, I was only moved by Sheila and God. And I love what I do there. I, 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 I shovel the snow off the cars. <laughs> and I do errands for them like they're knock on my door say you going out today i said not really oh i thought maybe you was going to the store i could use a loaf of bread <laughs> get the money let me get my clothes on mm -hmm. and i'm gone that's beautiful it just sounds like presence yeah. is really the key but you what what he's in. very humble about is that when he first had this uh uh vision that they there was a need there and he called me about it and um, he said you know I, I think I want to get some pizzas and some sodas and get a movie I think they would really like that and I'm thinking oh man perfect you know this is another ministry of people that need presence that need a value to be given a value and dignity to their lives that that as a ministry we haven't been able to to do and uh, I said, wonderful. I said, uh, let me give you the money and you get what you think would be good for them. He says, no, 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 wait a minute. He says, you don't understand. He says, I have to do this. I have had so much in my life. And even though I don't have a lot in my pocket now, he says, this is how I can give back to them. And with his few dollars, he figured out a way to get pizzas and sodas, and that was the beginning of this ministry. So uh, he really uh, has epitomized how when you allow God to come into your life, and then when you take it a step further and you allow God to work through you, what can be done is just amazing. And the other, I think, beautiful picture of when he first got into his apartment, now, he'd been homeless for ages. He gets in his apartment, and his best buddy, Charles, who uh, was still drinking, um, was dying. So what did Kirk do? But he brought Charles into his home. So, very proud.
cup is a great exa example, just a great example. And now we get fed. I get fed personally, and the people that we present him to get fed with Christ's love and uh, the perfect example of how when you extend mercy, you're extending the presence of Christ. You know, thank you both so much for really helping us to see God's love and mercy at work and in action. Uh, it really shows us the corporal and spiritual works of mercy and how we can bring them in to everyday life as well, because we're all called to those works of mercy, both the corporal and the spiritual. And the Year of Mercy is a wonderful opportunity for every person to learn more about those works of mercy. And we can find out more about them at SyracuseDiocese.org. Thank you again both so much, Sheila and Kirk, for coming and sharing God's love with one another and those you work with and live with.